Breath of Fire. Finally, Breath of Fire's turn on the What the Hell Happened series that I've been doing for the past few weeks. Today we will finally learn what the hell happened to it. Breath of Fire is one of the most important RPG franchises, historically speaking, in my opinion, because it is just one of those franchises that were behind the other great franchises. You know, not necessarily influenced them, but it was just there, along with the history of so many other JRPG franchises. So I believe it's really important and it made history. So today we're finally going to learn what the hell happened to it. And no, guess what? I don't own any single Fire Emblem. Wait, Fire Emblem? Oh, I meant Breath of Fire. Yeah. Uh, I need to stop these stupid jokes. Capcom, one of the most famous video game companies in history and the one behind the fabulous Breath of Fire franchise. At the early 90s, the RPG genre was becoming really successful in Japan, so Capcom wanted a piece of the action. They wanted to get into the genre even though they had never done it before, at least not in traditional style RPGs. In other words, this was entirely new for the company. So they asked Yoshinori Kawano to develop a turn-based RPG. He then came up with the first Breath of Fire in 1993 for the Super Nintendo. Now take a look at the cover. It says Squaresoft, doesn't it? Well, it turns out that Square was responsible for localizing the game to North America. This game didn't come out anywhere else. And yes, the cover looks nothing like the anime covers we are used to nowadays. But that was something common back then. Regardless of all that, this new RPG trying to compete with others of its time was a commercial success. It was very well received in Japan and North America, so Capcom thought it would be a good idea to keep doing this. They felt as if, as if they had entered the territory of a new genre the right way. So the first Breath of Fire was good enough in sales for Capcom to produce a second game. Breath of Fire 2 also for the Super Nintendo was released the following year in 1994 with yet another horrible cover. This time Capcom published it both in Japan and North America, but it was localized by a company called Laguna in Europe almost two years later. This was the first Breath of Fire they have gotten, so obviously they wonder what the hell had happened to the first one. But despite all that, the game succeeded, not as much as the first one had done, especially because of the mixed reviews it had outside Japan, but it was successful enough to let Capcom know that they were still in the RPG market. After all, Breath of Fire had already become a mainstream franchise, especially when they released the third game in the series, but now for a different console. Yes, the PlayStation. Capcom followed the same steps as many other companies that abandoned Nintendo at a time, like Squaresoft, switching to a much better platform for RPGs. So Breath of Fire 3 came out in 1997 in Japan and 1998 in North America. The same year Infogrames published the game in Europe. So this new title was even more successful than the two previous games, especially in Europe, and even though this game had not been made by Kawano anymore, it still followed the same ideas as the previous entries. The traditional turn-based style, some innovation in its gameplays, and a much more solid story now. Breath of Fire had finally become a successful mainstream franchise, not as much as others though, but still enough to keep Capcom and its fans happy. Now in Japan, these three games had been equally successful. They were even mangas out there and all sorts of promotional stuff. So with that in mind, there was no reason not to release worldwide Breath of Fire 4. It came out in the year 2000 and it was published everywhere by Capcom, even in Europe this time the following year. Again made by Capcom Development Studio 3, same as the previous title, this game was another major success. To date it remains considered by many fans, including me, as the best Breath of Fire ever and an absolute cult classic that earned respect and love from a lot of gamers out there. Capcom knew this, they noticed this. The, their RPG franchise was a very successful series everywhere in the world. 
So what were they going to do now? Another bread of fire? Nah, how about some more mangas exclusive for Japan? Okay, what else? Hmm, let's port the first two games to the Game Boy Advance. Well, thankfully this did happen outside Japan, including Europe where the first Breath of Fire had never been released before. So in 2001, the world met, with a much better cover, the port of the first game. The following year, same thing happened with the second one. Although both releases in Europe have been published by Ubisoft, by the way, these ports were also very successful and gave the franchise more fame than what it already had, more mainstream, more money, more production for future entries in the series. So what now, Capcom? What comes next? A new Breath of Fire, right? Nah, let's do some spin-offs exclusively in Japan for mobile phones. Yeah, in 2003 they began releasing them. There was a card game, a fishing game and two official spin-offs of Breath of Fire 4. All of this only in Japan. What did the rest of the world get in 2003? Breath of Fire, Dragon Quarter for the PS2. Okay, we got a new Breath of Fire, thanks. But why did they remove the number 5 from the title? In Japan it was still called Breath of Fire 5, right? Well, okay, it's a new Breath of Fire, so we're cool. Thanks Capcom. Or not. Yep, the game was successful in Japan, but in the rest of the world, it was not. Mixed reviews everywhere you went back then. I even remember people heavily complaining about how this shouldn't have been called Breath of Fire. The game's good in my opinion, but hard as fuck. However, that wasn't the issue. The overly complicated battle system and unnecessarily annoying gameplay mechanics, also not being in a medieval setting anymore but instead in a dystopian science fiction idea, which I thought was pretty cool, turned many, many fans down. But this was only the tip of the iceberg. Capcom noticed that its fifth game had not been as successful as the others outside Japan, so they continued with their mobile phone bullshit in their own country. Now, since this franchise had been slightly more successful in Europe, Capcom decided it would be a good idea to port the third game to the PSP, only in Japan and Europe. This happened in 2005 and 6 respectively. So screw you America, you're not getting this, no way not until 2016 in digital format. After this, the series vanished. Years went by and nothing happened. Year after year everybody kept waiting for something new, but not even Japan was getting anything, not even them. So what the hell had happened? Where was Breath of Fire? In 2016, finally the series returned for mobile phones. The official Breath of Fire 6, yes, still considered part of the mainline series, was released only in Japan. No Europe, no America, no anywhere else, no, not even a Roman number anymore. Well, it was turned into an action RPG in which you could create and customize your own character, male or female, and take part in offline or online missions alike. And yes, it looks good, doesn't it? Not exactly as a pure breath of fire, but cool nonetheless, right? Well, guess what? This was an absolute and complete failure. It lasted for little more than a year until all services died. Capcom never explained anything about this mess and to date, they sometimes ignore this game even existed. But hey, at least they told us in our faces, shamelessly and with absolutely no regret, that the series just doesn't sell and that there's too many RPGs out there, so why the hell should they continue with Breath of Fire? There's no point! They are convinced that Breath of Fire will not sell at all. So there goes our only hope on getting a new, decent Breath of Fire someday. It will not happen, all thanks to Capcom's idea of it being a series that failed. Today, Breath of Fire is one of the most important RPG franchises, historically speaking, that managed to capture a lot of people's hearts, leaving fans all around the world with a few great classics to remember. After the failure of the last two official mainline titles, 
Capcom just didn't want to lose money anymore, and I understand that, but coldly abandoning the series, ignoring that there is a huge fan base out there they could easily exploit, is just not cool. But that's Capcom for you, we already know that. So that's the story behind the franchise disappearance, and now we know what the hell happened to Breath of Fire. That's it guys, that's just sad, isn't it? And what makes it most ironically is that Capcom usually says that they never let their franchises die. They just refused. I mean, Capcom is well known for keeping their franchises alive and making miraculously miraculous comebacks every now and then. So, is all hope lost for Breath of Fire? After what they've said about the franchise, it's really hard to believe, but maybe someday, maybe someday, maybe. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!